going on over there? I'm de-aging Leo with my Just for Men um, brow. Or Yeah, there we go. Leo, look at you. You look beautiful. Oh Is God. Leo too old for you or what? No, why did this start? Why did we decide to do this? Because Fallon doesn't have mascara, can't you notice? <laughs> We're gonna use that on Fallon now? Right now. No, uh, I don't want your little hair follicle things <laughs> in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Save your energy. We have an hour. I said if I was going to do TV, because I was never not going to be myself. Where are the people who are a little bit different? You're sitting next to one on the couch. So let's just say that. Be yourself, but not too much of yourself. Now, here's Jason. People, sit down. No. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Jason Show. How y'all doing? Good. Thank you for being here. I'm Jace. Uh, let us start with this. An embarrassing moment for a new grandpa. Caught on tape. Look at this. His granddaughter. His granddaughter had been climbing out of the crib, so the parents lowered the mattress. And there goes grandpa. Right. Yep. 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 There goes, uh, there goes Grandpa into the crib. Yeah. The parents uh, lowered the crib a little too much for Grandpa. And to make things worse, Grandpa lost his phone and it started flashing. That's what you're seeing there. Grandpa, as you can see, did manage to get out uh, and didn't tell anyone. Let's look at this one more time, shall we? One more time. Let's put the ad. ad oh, oh, oh. And down it goes. Yeah. There. <laughs> uh, the, only, the only reason the family found out is because they helped him find his lost phone. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Cue that music, Leo. Let's start. Here we go, everybody. get to say this two more times filling in for Kendall say hi to Fallon everybody <laughs> hello friend hi you look uh you look floral today you look Christmassy thank you yes I told them I was going to film a scene for Bridgerton after this yeah so. <laughs> you, do. <laughs> you do look like a Bridgerton thank extra you. thank you yeah. yeah yeah how you doing I'm good how are you two more shows that's it I know what is the word you used earlier Penultimate. And I said, what does that even mean? Yeah. <laughs> I've never heard penultimate. Pen this is your penultimate episode okay. of our show. Yes. And then as we've been saying, just like we used to do in Indiana with pets, mm -hmm. we're going to take you out in the woods, open the door, and just let you go back into yes. the woods. That's yes. right. Yeah. Yes. That's it. Yeah. No. Oh. <laughs> Je can I tell you, Jeff is like this. Don't say that. People are going to write emails. <laughs> It was the 70s. It was Indiana. We don't really do that. I'm just saying. But yeah. Let's go, go, Scruffy, go into the woods. But anyway, yeah. Uh, I can't believe it went I know. like that. It, it did. It went really fast. Four, what, what is it? Four months, Jeff? Four, three, five months? Three, three months. months? Okay. Five months. I don't, I don't know. It just, I don't know. Wow. I feel like that seems like it's felt longer no. to you then. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Uh, we have some fun things planned for tomorrow. Hey, speaking of anniversaries, uh, before we get too far into this show, I want to say congratulations uh, to my crew over at the radio show because for those of you who do not know, um, uh, I also have a radio show on my talk with. And today is the 15th anniversary of that show. So yeah. I just want to say, yeah. Yeah. I, uh... So did you guys have your quinceanera today? We did. Okay. We did, yeah. Yeah, yeah we did. Yeah. Uh, and we used to go up against this one in the ratings, and uh, she whipped our butt every year. But thank God she moved out of the morning, so now I have a chance. <laughs> 
but uh, but no to Alexis and Holly, uh, who all the people that have been part of the show over 15 years. I just want to say thank you. I have so much gratitude. It's a it's a kick in the pants to do that show, and uh, I'm just very grateful. So thanks to everybody. Uh, I appreciate it. Okay. Now, let's get started, everybody. It's time for the hot dish. Roll it, Leo. Here we go. This is huge. You know, this is like, th these weeks, uh, there's not a lot going on in Hollywood usually. We're usually scraping at the bottom for news. But this is big. A potential huge Hollywood deal could change movies, TV as we know it. Warner Brothers Discovery is now in talks. They met for breakfast uh, is the deal. <laughs> uh, is in talks with Paramount Global about a potential merger. Now, neither of the companies are saying much after their little meeting at Denny's. But if it would happen, it would drastically change Hollywood and how we all consume media. Not only would it merge the streaming services of Max and Paramount Plus, but the movie studios would combine as well as the TV operations. So we put this together because, look, I, I, there would be no reason for you to know all of this unless you're nerds like us in this business. Warner Brothers Discovery owns, amongst other things, HBO, CNN, Food Network, HGTV, TLC, Paramount Global, amongst other things, owns CBS, CBS News, MTV, Comedy Central, Nickelodeon, obviously the Paramount Movie Studio. So far, the talks are in early stages. If this happens, first, it would be huge. And second, it would be, like, for us, it would mean, like, CNN and CBS News would be under the same umbrella, mm -hmm. which they share resources anyway. Anderson Cooper's on 60 Minutes. He's also uh, over there on CNN. Um, Gail King does a show on CNN. They, there's been rumors of that merger for decades. It makes a lot of sense yeah, it in, does. in this fragmented environment. It would also save me on one streaming service, which I do appreciate. Well, <laughs> well. Right or not. I no, guess, it, yeah. would, it would. Okay. I, I read, as that news broke, I was reading this uh, article on CNBC, and it was giving media predictions for 2024, and one of the predictions, I knew it, and I think it's going to come true. They said that eventually somebody, probably Amazon, they're going to be the aggregator of all these streaming services, and you'll be able to buy a bundle just like we do with cable. <laughs> so right, stream, yeah. which would be great. It would be great if there was one service that would say, "Okay, do you want Netflix, Disney Plus, Paramount, uh, you know, Pluto?" Okay, it'll be a flat fee of this. Mm -hmm. That would, if I'm the heads of Warner, Paramount, Disney. I would absolutely do this because it would be way less confusing for all of us. Right. And put it, it really would be. It would be. It has to go to that. Yeah. It has to. As long as they don't raise it every few months, like you get the introductory great deal and then it keeps going up like everything else, that I would not be a fan of. And, but, then, yeah. because, and then what they do is they, they count on you to not check your, your subscriptions yeah. every month and they sneak in, oh, it raised $2 and you don't always check that. No, I never do. I never do. I've been paying for so many random subscriptions and I'm like, what? I've been paying for that for three years? I had no idea. Yeah. It's like, geez. Playgirl, what's that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What? Kids don't know Playgirl. I know, that's like in the 70s and 80s. I don't know, yeah. <laughs> Next to the dish, forget Barbie. Ryan Gosling is hoping people want a little more Ken for Christmas. This week, Ryan and music producer Mark Ronson released new versions of his song, I'm Just Ken, including one with a little Christmas flavor. Look. Whatever you have to do, Warner Brothers. Whatever you have to do. Yeah. I mean, really, you can add a sleigh bell to any song, and it's Anything. Christmas. It's a Christmas song. The people that made the Macarena just did that. They added, no, I'm not <laughs> joking. The duo did three new versions of the song, which, if you would like, are available to stream right now. I, yeah. 
much more publicity does Barbie <laughs> need? I mean, gee, Jiminy Christmas. I know, Greta just got married this week. The director yes. Greta Gerwig did, uh, yeah. yeah now with, It's on streaming, it's on Max. Oh, I wanted to note too, because you guys, you know, um, we have one more live show, but if you're looking for something to watch, a little note to put in your, uh, your file there for the holidays, Bradley Cooper's Maestro is now available on Netflix, starting okay. streaming yesterday with Carrie Mulligan. It's going to be nominated for a bazillion things. It's on Netflix. Go watch it. I can't wait to. It's two hours. Boom. I had no idea it was a Netflix movie. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Nice. They released yeah. it a little bit in theaters, and then, yeah, it's a Netflix film, so it dropped yesterday. Okay. Um, so I can't wait. I'm so excited to watch it. All right. Well, send prayers. My child goes to sleep, so I have a chance to watch an adult film. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh. What kind of adult film? <laughs> oh, good question. <laughs> Let him grab my phone. <laughs> I see your search history. Okay, uh, we'll okay. Be we'll be right back. <laughs> Stay with us, everybody. <laughs> I see what you search back there. Welcome back. Nikki Minaj hit up the Late Show last night over the years. She's tried and tried and tried to teach Stephen Colbert how to rap. Uh, and her work, her years long worth <laughs> may have finally paid off. This is so good. Look. So you're always right. Always. Yes, because I'm, well, as soon as I get a beat, well, I'm, I'm hearing music, being inspired, coming outside. Yes, I'm always thinking about raps and music. Yes. Uh-oh, oh, you learned? Wait, did you learn how to make a beat? <laughs> That's definitely nope. not the one I taught no, you the last time. All right. Oh, well, I'll do the beat. You'll do the beat. You, you, you just be entertained. <laughs> now, I'm gonna say it again, and after I say it, the first thing that pops into your mind that rhymes, you end the rap. Trust yourself. Okay. You're a pro. Yes. One, two, one, two, one, two. Uh, high heels on for Stevie. If I marry Stevie, he ain't ever gonna leave me. Uh. High heels or not, Nikki. You better hope you never meet my wife, Evie. Oh! <laughs> Fan. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> 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 That was fantastic. <laughs> Evie, by the way, was up in the office. She was upstairs in Steven's office. That was so good. If you've never seen the original one oh, yeah. where she does her rap for Steven, do yourself a favor because it catches him so off guard. He cannot compose himself what Nikki says to him. I, it's, it sounds right. It's so good. It's so good. Nikki is out promoting her new album, a kind of a sequel of sorts, Pink Friday 2. More dish now. It's been a few weeks since we've been able to chat with him. Audience, give a heap and helping welcome to, to the host. I don't know why I said that. To the host of the Hollywood Raw podcast, it's Dax Hold, everybody. Hello. Good morning, Jason. Good morning, audience. I, I, I don't know why I asked for a heap and helping welcome, but anyway. Hi, buddy. How you I'll doing? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How about you, buddy? I'm well. What's on, uh, what's on the old cast this week? Well, so we actually didn't have a guest on because Adam and I have been roaming around meeting all of these celebrities over the last couple of days. So we wanted to talk about uh, our interactions and the people that we've been running into. So that's what this week's ed uh, episode was dedicated towards. He's down in Miami right now. He always, uh, during the wintertime, he'll go down to Miami, spend like uh, a couple weeks to a month down there. And that's where all the celebrities kind of flock down for Art Basel and all kinds of stuff. So he has been running into Serena Williams. He got to see her the other night. She was, uh, she actually came out of a restaurant and got into a brand new Tesla Cybertruck. And so he was standing there like, oh my God, look at this beautiful, crazy car. Um, and so he, he gets into that whole story. He was, uh, then later he, he winds up inside of like Kanye West's like entourage. He's like, 
I'm not a Kanye fan, but they just kind of pulled me in. And he talks about the story of how Kanye was going to this like pop-up show, this pop-up concert down there. And it was two in the morning. And all Adam could think about was, why does Kanye have his kids out at two in the morning? Because this is the show that, um, if you remember, Kanye got it performed. He had that uh, KKK looking hood thing on. And uh, he got a lot of flack for online about that. But then his daughter, Northwest, gets on stage, she performs. So anyway, Adam goes through that whole story and how that night wound up. And uh, and then I got into hanging out with Rob Gronkowski, um, <laughs> obviously for the Bucks, the Patriots, and uh, I saw him at the LA Bowl uh, a couple days ago. Yeah, you're being modest, let me brag on you, Dax's company. You guys were featured uh, at the end of the game. Or ex explain to folks what you did. Yeah, so my company uh, outside of this podcast is Trophy Smack, we do crazy over the top awards trophies championship belts rings kind of everything and uh we are the official sponsor of uh our, of the official uh belt provider so we do the big championship belt for the la bowl it's this massive belt we did it the last two years when jimmy kimmel was the host now rob gronkowski is the host of it and so uh yeah we we provide it and so a part of that we go to the game we get to go down on the field hang out with people, take photos. It's, it's really a fun time. I get to take 20 of my staff members to the game. We get a suite. It's, it's awesome. Yeah, you guys look great. Next year, I, I want to put in an early order. Next year is the 10-year anniversary of the Jason Show. We would like the biggest damn belt you can ever make. <laughs> I love it, dude. I Done. love it. Thanks, I can't believe buddy. it's been 10 years already. That's amazing. Congratulations. Well, Thank you. And, and then we'll buy you a plane ticket and you can deliver it yourself. Yeah. Well, that's a lie. I've been no, asking for that plane will. ticket for no, 10 years. No, we will. We will. I'll make Fox pay All for right. it. That's right. <laughs> Dax Love Holt, it. everybody. Subscribe to the Hollywood Raw podcast. Bye, right, buddy. I, I ran into Serena um, at Disney World around the around Thanksgiving. And yeah, I know. I, I never told the story. I don't know why I did. But yeah, she was, I, I saw her at the crepe stand. Oh. I was like, oh, there she is. And Colin goes, that's Serena. And I was like, simmer down. Yeah. Uh, let's let's right. act like we've been here before. Nope. Let's leave her alone. <laughs> she was with like two VIP tour yeah. guides. I'm like, just let her get her crepe. You, you didn't, know what you I didn't mean? do any creepy videos from a distance? Yep, knew it. <laughs> I did one Zoom in pick, yep, just obviously, one. Yeah. Obviously, you have to. I hid behind a merch mar a merch <laughs> cart, and I'm like, boop, boop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> More dish for you now, or vulnerable moment that's uh, getting uh, news all over the place for actress Taraji P. Henson. While promoting her new movie, The Color Purple, on Gail King's Sirius XM show, Taraji broke down when Gail asked about rumors that she's going to quit acting. Here's a little bit of the exchange, uh, of what she said. Listen. I'm just tired of working. so hard being gracious at what i do getting paid a fraction of the cost mm -hmm. i'm tired of hearing my sister say the same thing over and over mm -hmm. you know you have a team mm -hmm. big bills come with what we do yes. we don't do this alone the mm -hmm. fact that we're up is a whole entire team behind That's us right. yes. They have to get paid. So when you hear someone saying, oh, such and such made $10 million, no, that's not, that, that didn't make it to their account. Mm -hmm. Know that off the top, mm -hmm. Uncle Sam is getting 50%. That's right. Okay? Mm -hmm. So do the math. Mm -hmm. Now we have $5 million. Mm -hmm. Your team is getting 30% or whatever your team is getting, off of what you grossed, Sometimes not more. after what Uncle Sam took. Now do the math. Mm -hmm. So... I just, I'm, You're tired. I'm, a, I'm only human, and, and mm -hmm. it seems every time I do something and I break another glass ceiling, when it's time to renegotiate, I'm at the bottom again mm -hmm. like I never mm -hmm. did what mm -hmm. I just did, and I'm just mm -hmm. tired. tired. Yeah. I'm tired. Now, let me... The Oscar nominee says she's sick of the pay disparity after working more than 20 years in Hollywood, and she's tired of excuses from studio heads who say mostly black movies, black actors, won't, quote, translate to overseas viewers. So it's not about, because I see a lot of, uh, and we don't get into weighty topics here, but this is important, and sometimes we do. Uh, I don't know what that was, but anyway, but, but, but th that's just BS, because first of all, and, and I know online people are saying, and you brought this up, some critics are going, oh, no one's going to feel it. No one feel sorry for you even with the math you're still bringing in a million two million it's not about that okay. it's not about that it's about her contemporaries are making three four five times that and these studio bosses telling uh, folks 
uh, telling these these actors, these black actors, that black stories don't translate. Um, I'm sorry, Black Panther. Um, every Denzel Washington movie, the original color purple, likely this color purple. Every Wayne's Brothers project. I, 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 it just, it's, it's crap. And if I was Taraji, I would feel the exact same way. You're watching everybody else. I mean, the woman was nominated for an Oscar, and and her movie, um, Hidden, uh, Hidden Figures. That was a huge hit. So don't, and her show Empire, mm -hmm. her, her show Empire wasn't just a hit here in the States. It was an international success. That's what she's talking about. It's crap. And if I was her, I would feel the exact same way. Pay her. Pay her. Pay her. Absolutely. If she's, if she's bringing in money for these studios, she's it, it, pay her what she's exactly. worth. Exactly. An Oscar winner shouldn't have to go to the back of the line again. No. She, her, every time an Oscar winner gets an Oscar, they're they're they get the best roles. They get the like huge their paychecks. Up. Yeah, their, exactly. Their paychecks mm -hmm. go up, but not Taraji. No. It doesn't make any damn sense to me. And it's not about being woke. It's not about being politically correct. It's about doing what the right thing is. That's what it's about. Anyway. <laughs> I used to watch Jason, but he got so woke. <laughs> we do get that one a lot. <laughs> Trust me, I am the le I am not woke. I'm 49. I'm, you know what I mean? <laughs> Buried down the center. But I was also raised right, and there's right and there's wrong. Mm -hmm. That's wrong. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Jeff, let me know when those emails come in, will you, please? Thank you. <laughs> Up next, only a few more days left in our second annual Christmas card exchange. I want to highlight a few more today. I'm loving these. Yeah, first up, Scott and Audrey from Centurio, Wisconsin sent us this card. Uh, where it is? Right her, right her. This is so sweet. They were in the audience for our breast cancer awareness show back in October. They say the show brightens the most bleak of days. No, well, I appreciate you guys being with us every day. Next, a card from one of my favorite places on the planet, Hawaii. Pat says, aloha. I watch your show whenever I visit Minnesota and also on YouTube. It's a gorgeous card. No so kidding. thank you from one of my favorite places. And finally, speaking of favorite places, born and raised, I'm a proud Chicagoland in uh, Chicagolandian uh, from Chicago. Carol from Chicago yeah. sent us this glittery card right there. And listen to this. Listen to this. Carol said she flew into town with her sister to see our show. Right there. Right there. Okay, and Carol gets, and we don't even have this, Carol gets viewer of the year because uh -huh. Carol knows what the right thing to do. I am from Chicago, and if you are from Chicago, you love one thing and one thing only, Garrett's popcorn, right there. Yes. And also, I try to be a giving person, but if this staff thinks I'm sharing this, no, no. <laughs> Maybe Eric, he did buy me a crystal Mickey Mouse hat. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Thank you, Carol. He gets a pop cup full. Eric can get a pup cup of the uh, Garrett's popcorn. <laughs> Again, he did buy me a crystal hat. Yeah. He'll get a kernel or two. That's about so it. Giving of I, you. I try, yeah. I try. We're gonna take a break. We'll be back after this. Back after this. up in just a little bit. You know what you're going to eat. You have the appetizers, but what are you going to serve for bubbles? Wine diva Leslie Miller has some great Christmas party bubble suggestions. And then, what did photographer Eric get director Leo for Christmas? We will unwrap the Nutter Butterness when we return. Much of the focus is on Christmas right now, but less than a week after that, hello, it's New Year's Eve. And if you plan to celebrate, how about popping a bottle of some bubbly? Here to talk champagne, <laughs> sparkling wine, and all things with bubbles in it is our wine diva. Give it up for Leslie Miller from Amuse Wine. Hello, love. Hello. Hello, love. 
Look at this festival background we got for you. I know. There's I know. actually snow. That cost uh, <laughs> uh, $15,000 right there. It's half our, most of our budget went in that animation. Um, okay, where are we starting? Well, you know, there's a lot of confusing, sparkling labels on the shelf. Like, what does Brut mean? What does Cava, Prosecco, Champagne mean? So I thought we would start with two of the basics, Cava and Prosecco. Because, I, let me compliment mm -hmm. you again. I think one of the things that you do for everybody watching is you explain, because there is no shame. I don't actually think I know what Brut means. Right. You, this is what you do so well, is you, you. educate folks on the language of all of this stuff. So yeah. let's start with... What, what the hell We're is brute? We're going to start with, yeah. <laughs> well, brute actually just means dry. That's all that brute means. It just means that it's dry. And we were talking about this earlier. Jeff and I were talking about recommendations. Thank you for doing that, everybody. Thank you. So what does dry mean in the sparkling world? World It's actually opposite of sweet, right? So if it's oh, so dry, then it's the opposite of sweet. So I would probably want a... A bubbly product that is brute. Brute, Got correct. It. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Now, kava is, a, now things are very located, right? So when we talk about kava, this comes from Spain. And I poured a little kava in your glass to get you started this morning. So again, morning. just like champagne, yeah. just like champagne, yes. kava is the region where, yes, okay. Yes, yes. This one, Penedes in kava. Um, now, this is, such, this is a region that actually takes on a lot of salty breezes. What's up, ladies? <laughs> That's it. That's it. That was very broy, yeah. by the way. Leo very broy. <laughs> What's up, ladies? Yeah. Uh, so kava salty, right? And goes really well with things like seafood. So if you're doing like a seafood tower, or maybe even just like some fried shrimp or something this year for the holiday, this is even perfect. some red lobster takeout. That's Cheers. Right. Yeah. That's right. Cheddar bay biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Prosecco. This is interesting because w one of the larger brands that's on the shelf would be something like a La Marca. Now, you can make Prosecco from the region of Veneto, but what you do find is the higher quality Proseccos come from a region called Valdo Biadene. <laughs> it's written right on the label. It starts with a V. Nobody's <laughs> going to say that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you see this very long word on the very front of the label of Prosecco, Veldo Biadene, it means that it's of the highest quality of Prosecco. Good tip. Write that down, everybody. Because I don't yes. really don't, you know, I don't like Prosecco. That's right. That's Can I try right. this? Is this? This is oh, actually that's not, oh, I'm Pet sorry. Nat. Let's I'm move getting on to ahead Pet of you. Nat. Okay, let's, yeah. Let's, let's sip this. This is my, this is like my babe this year. I'm completely obsessed with this wine. I can't drink enough of it. It is savory, delicious, and it is a Pet Nat, which means Petiant Natural. This is a kind of a what, term that the hipsters that are throwing mean? around. <laughs> yes. Petion natural just means that they are throwing everything into the bottle all at once, and the fermentation is happening inside the bottle instead of literally a tank or a second fermentation. Um, and so this oh. is the oldest method of making sparkling wine in the world. Okay. I didn't think I would like this. Oh, God, this is so good. But this is so good. Yeah, it's this so good. This is really good, good. Yeah. yeah. This is real good. Yeah. And this one ends up coming from Spain, so... Leo, take seven. Is What's up, ladies? <laughs> Go ahead. Okay? Pet Nat, you can see them a lot in restaurant lists. Now, remember, Champagne can is only come from the region of Champagne, France. Champagne yes. isn't just a name. That's correct. It's the region. It's where it came from. That's right. Okay. So, if you want to ball out and buy Champagne, remember that this region is very <laughs> expensive. Champagne is real, balling real out. expensive. It's <laughs> real expensive right now. Okay. Yes. So, we're balling out right yes. now. Yeah. And there's only three permitted grapes there, Chardonnay, okay. Pinot Noir, and Pinot, Pinot Meunier. So, of course, we're going to put it into a burgundy glass, so what we've talked about a million times on the Jason show we're gonna say it again though for all the new viewers yes do not will you say it <laughs> <laughs> drink whatever you want to drink out of but if you're going to spend the money on champagne from Champagne France put it into a burgundy glass and this is really equipped for those particular grapes that live in that region no flutes no flutes throw them out Throw the flutes out Listen, or donate them. Duluth is going to be calling me later. I get this every time I'm on and talking about this. Somehow Duluth calls me and says, Lady, what's happening? <laughs> People from Duluth literally get your number yeah, and they, they go, do. Lady, what's up? <laughs> Lady, what's up? It's our Duluth friends, <laughs> let me tell you. Okay, that's okay. all good. Okay, entertaining 
tips, entertaining tips. Entertaining tips. Yes, now these, you can find these all over the place. These are the little silicone, uh, little ice cube trays. And you can stick so many different fun things in there to make these fun little cubes. Look at these. Aaron, get a shot of this. so cute? That is a really good yes. idea for your, for your New Year's Eve party. Yes. Now, what's really fun about this is that when you pour over, I mean, that stuff will obviously all melt down. It's like a cocoa bomb. Yeah, <laughs> but for grown-ups. And I, you can do this with juice, so you can make a fun little mimosa. So instead of, you know, like I would that, not and do I bet it. It has a fun little flavor thing. Yes, too. and look how bougie you look when you sip. Okay. Woo! Here we I go. Love. Leo take seven again. <laughs> Get in the shot. What's, What's up, up, ladies, ladies? and men? <laughs> Okay. You, you were a lesbian for like four seconds there. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> okay, moving on from lesbians. What's next? Yeah. Well, the NA sector is giant this year. Non-alcoholics everywhere. Yes, and this is a giant topic, and everybody, I, we have so many on the shelf now, and they are getting so good. Um, this is Proxies, which let me tell you, everybody in California is drinking this baby. Um, Proxies is made of tea. It's made of verju, which is unripened wine grapes. Also, natural flavors. I want you to give this a try. This is my favorite of the line. Every time that you open up like a food and wine magazine, something like that, People are talking about proxies, and this is why. I know why. It's bomb. That's really yeah. good. And I, I it's enjoy delicious. a lot of NA drink. Yeah. This is real good. It Get is this. delicious. Get this, everyone. Yeah. Yes, it is delicious. Last thing I'm going to tell people, you know, make yourself a little spritzer for the holiday because everybody needs to hydrate yeah. over the season. And there is, should be no shame in your game when it comes to hydration. No. Right? Okay. Hydration's good. Yes. There so we go. You put in a little kava and then make sure that you pick up like a really delicious delicious little uh, club soda Add and it. you can also put in like some fun fruit something like that and now you have yourself a little hydrated spritzer. Cheers! <laughs> Leslie Miller everybody! <laughs> Go to AmuseyWine.com <laughs> and if you visit us here in the Twin Cities visit her store Sit Better in the North Loop of Minneapolis. We will be right back. <laughs> Cheers! That, no, no, Paul, that is really good. So yesterday you saw me lose it when I opened my Christmas gift from photographer Eric. Uh, it's our new tradition around here. They are my new golden Mickey ears that are now on display in my house. Today, two more members of the Jason Show staff are opening their very unique gifts from photographer Eric. And first up, audience, give it up for director Leo, everybody. Joining yeah. us from the Jason Show control room. Okay. Uh, Leo, yeah. Leo, take it away, my friend. Okay, so I was given a card okay. and a box. I was told to, here, that's what the front looks like. Okay. <laughs> I was supposed to read it first. Okay, I gotta turn this down a little bit. It says, this year, the happiest and most excited I've seen you is when you rushed through the Jason Show office doors and gleefully shared a photo of your teeth and inner mouth with Ted and me. That's true, I did do that. <laughs> uh, we are looking, we, as we look confused at your face, lit up with a small child holding a puppy for the first time. It was kind of a joy and I wish you were to, to have that every day. I also wanted you to be able to share that joy with your family and friends. Joy to the world, photographer Eric. Aww. Okay, so here's my body. Okay. So here we go. I'm a Leo, nervous. Leo, by the way, it's a great shot of you that you took. It's a great shot. All right. What did I get? Oh, it's a dental camera. No kidding. Now I can look at my teeth all the time and I don't have to take my photograph anymore. Look at that. I am gonna use this. Thank you, Eric. That's wonderful. Leo, Leo, Leo I expect some toothpicks by tomorrow. Okay? Absolutely, yeah. I'll get them to you. Okay, thank you, buddy. All right, thank you. Give it up for Leo, everybody. Thanks, Eric. Now, that was good, Eric. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, our next victim. Give it up for executive producer Jeff. Okay. 
same rules apply. Please read your card from Eric. I'll keep it quick because we're a little tight on time, but <laughs> it needs to be stated the Jason show would not exist without you. Well, it would. Our ragtag, <laughs> our ragtag team of misfits would not exist without you. The friendship that bonds us all together does not exist without you. You are the man behind the curtain. The one who comes in early in the morning to make this show shine. It's gosh darn time. You start dressing like the mob boss slasher rock star you are. <laughs> oh, God, I have to open. I am so excited. I am so excited and frightened about what's in that box. There's duct tape. There's duct tape. <laughs> Fallon. Yeah, well, we may have to cut the next segment. Yeah. <laughs> We have it. Okay, there oh, we go. Here we go. Is Fallon more manly than me? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a <laughs> I don't either. Okay. Oh, that <laughs> is. Look at that. Pop it on. Pop it on. Put oh. it on. <laughs> Can you not love this team? I just, I, I, anyway, welcome back. Uh, the best TV ever. Seems hard to choose, right? But Variety.com is doing just that. Yesterday, they named the 100 greatest TV shows of all time. And you know I love tearing apart these lists. <laughs> Covering dramas, comedies, talk shows, reality. Before we focus on the top shows, let's look at where some iconic shows finished. Before I read this, let me say, I actually agree with a lot of this list. First, Friends only managed to rank 29th out of 100. The Golden Girls is number 18. The Oprah Winfrey Show is 17. Saturday Night Live is 15th. And the Mary Tyler Moore Show is in the top 10 at number 9, based right here in Minneapolis. My beloved Dallas did make the list, making the top 100, <laughs> finishing at 78. I mean, not bad. But you know what? You know what? It made the list. It did change television. You'll learn more about it in a special episode of our show coming up soon. Another interesting placement has to do with late night. Listen to this. David Letterman's NBC show, Late Night, finished number 35. That is ahead of The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, which placed 52nd. I think Dave would not like that, but I'm a fan of both of these men. I've said it many times. If you look at what each man did for television, Johnny uh, didn't uh, Johnny did create the format in a way, but Steve Allen really did. Dave turned it on its head mm -hmm. and was kind of the anti Carson. So I, I get the argument they're making. Another surprise is at number 16. That's where Norman Lear's masterpiece All in the Family finished. I say this is one of my disagreements with this list. Number 16 is way too low, way too low. And again, Again, we're doing a really special episode coming up. Is it next week, Jeff, where I go two weeks, where I go deep? It's just me talking about all of these shows. It's just me and you and the camera. Uh, you'll learn more about uh, the history of All in the Family in that episode. Let's move on to number six right now. Number six is a little bit of a surprise. It's HBO's Sex in the City. Okay. Yeah, Variety says the show took risks, showcasing women in a new light, and it still, still resonates today. I gotta tell you, 
I don't have a problem with this. No, I, I yeah. do. Even if you're not a fan of Sex in the City, you can't really take argument with it. Mm -hmm. It did. It was the first show that showed women in this light, showed groups of women friends talking like women really do. Right, right. Do you like Sex in the City? I don't know this I about do you. I like do like Sex, you? yeah. And I even watch the current. And just like that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, Breaking Bad. <laughs> Breaking Bad was number five. Was number Oh, I, <laughs> mixed, mixed I, reviews. I, I love Breaking Bad. I don't know if it should be number five. I would have, all in the family should have been number five. I'm just saying, yeah, really. The fourth show is still on the air. The Simpsons. Writers say, writers say no other show has had more of an impact on comedy than this one. I look, in longevity, too, I, 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 this is a frightening, frightening statistic. Mm -hmm. This old man right here, hi, this old man right, this guy right here was a freshman in high school when that show started. Oh, okay. Yeah. I started watching it quite young because my dad, while cracking a brewski, was like, this is a cartoon we can agree on. <laughs> started watching it very young yeah oh those yeah. were the days now number three a show that often often finishes first on lists like this number three is the sopranos from hbo variety calls it the ultimate anti-hero drama and a perfect analysis of a gangster okay now here we go number two mad men yeah. now they, Variety says they're picking this not just for the quality, but they credit Mad Men for starting a second golden age of television on cable and streaming before it premiered in 2007. The reason I'm pausing is because a lot of these lists credit The Sopranos with ushering in. Now the number one greatest TV show of all time according to Variety. Here it is. Ball and I Love Lucy, the article says even if you've never seen an episode, you know the show and its iconic moments. And as a nerd, uh, Desi Arnaz created the three, set, the three camera format that everyone still uses, and we're using it right now. Yeah. You can see that whole list on Variety.com. We'll be right back.
Today it's Cassidy from Blaine. Cassidy says her mom was obsessed with the show first. Now she watches and loves uh, all the kind of things that she learns, tips and tricks and more. Cassidy says she often says, I saw that on the Jason show. I love that, Cassidy. What a beautiful baby, too. She gets a Jason show mug, also entered to win the monthly grand prize that includes being a VIP guest in the audience, a $150 gift card to Becker Furniture, and a $250 gift card to Renew Med Spa. We'll be right back. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thanks to these folks celebrating their anniversary with us. Thanks to our folks that came in from Chicago. One more round of applause. Bring them back in. Executive producer Jeff. Here's his outfit. Here's his outfit from photographer Eric. There it is right there. Now, we thought, you know, you, I, I couldn't get your mom to react to this, but I thought we would get our oh, she boss, has. She has. our president, Marion Mim Davey, to uh, react to your costume that you got. <laughs> Marion, come on in, Mim. Let's give it up for our president, Mim. Come around the corner. Am I, am I fired? Well, she's not there. I think I think we're fired. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, bye, bye, Jeff. There we go. You look great, Jeff. Well, way to ruin the bit, Mim. Okay. <laughs> Had it all ready to go, and thanks, Mim. I appreciate it. <laughs> Anybody need a talk show? Oh, uh, yeah. I, I, oh, there she is. <laughs> Grace, Marion, look at Jeff's outfit. <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow on the show, the cooking mom is back with delicious holiday recipes, and we say farewell to Fallon. That's right. Tear. <laughs> that's going to do it for us, though. Oh, wait, tomorrow's going to be fun, but right now, that's going to do it for us. If you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Thanks for watching. Thanks to these folks for being here, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.